Hey everyone, good morning. Andrew here. Can y'all hear me okay? Can someone just write in the chat if you're getting this audio right now? Hopefully you are. Yes, we're all hearing it okay? I guess so. So um, we're gonna just do a little housekeeping first on this call. So there's a couple things that, great. So there's a couple things that you need for this call. Um, the first thing you need is just to think about a little section if you're a singer of a song you can use. Um, we're gonna test some stuff today with yourself with internal and external focus of how you pay attention when you work. If you are not a singer, you can um, do speaking. So you can use some text, like a monologue you have, something that, um, a short little section that you can test and you can test your vocal quality and also test your, just how it feels in your body. Um, and the other thing, there's two little objects you're gonna need to find around your house. You need a some kind of pencil or pen like this. Um, and then you need some object that's soft, like an item of clothing. I'm gonna demo with this pillow here when we do it, um, but just something like that that's gonna sit on the top of your head. It's not gonna be too heavy, but that you can, um, that's not gonna hurt your head. So those are the two things you just need to, to get before we do it. I'm also gonna put um, in the chat here, so there's a little quiz. Um, we're gonna talk this morning about interoception, which is um, how you feel your internal life. So I'm gonna just put the link, um, I just put it there from the, the backstage message on, um, that's the link to the test if you wanna do it. So um, if you wanna just click on that, it's like 15 questions, shouldn't take long. If you're curious about um, your interoception, you can take the test there. I think it's also gonna be in the uh, description for this video. Anyway, let's get to the stuff for the, the day. So we're talking about internal versus external focus. So let's talk a little bit about what that means. So internal focus is defined as um, you paying attention to the movements of your own body parts. So in a singing training, it might be something like lift your soft palate or move your tongue forward or open your diaphragm. Those are internal focus instructions. And then external focus is something where you are paying attention to the effects of your movement out in the world. So in a voice way, an external focus instruction might be something like send your voice to that wall over there or out the window. That's an external focus. So they're, they're in different parts of your brain. So the internal focus, we're gonna call that interoception, which is your ability to feel what's going on in yourself. That lives in something called your insula of your brain, um, and it's fed by your vagus nerve, V-A-G-U-S. Not like Las Vegas, but um, vagus means last in Latin, wanderer. So it's a nerve that goes through your whole uh, torso down to your pelvic floor, and the vagus nerve controls your larynx. So there's always an interoceptive um, component to voice, but then there's also exteroceptive, which is about you affecting change in the world, and that's living in a lot of places, but in your motor and sensory cort cortices in your brain. And so we're gonna start this morning with a little test for you all to see if an internal or an external focus feels better for you. So if you're somewhere where you can move a little bit, I'm gonna ask you to do that. Um, we're gonna check your range of motion. So if you're somewhere where you can't move a lot, you can use your neck. So everyone just start with a neck rotation and just see how far your neck can swivel like this. You're trying to turn from your cheekbone And then you can also do this one, which is the ear to the shoulder. And what you're trying to watch with this one is you're trying to watch not that. So you're trying to keep this shoulder down while you tilt so you get a real sense of where your range is. So do that a couple times, just see where you are. If something feels stiff, try to remember that. Um, you can also use your shoulder. So I'm gonna demo that here. So if you take your arm like this and then you go like that. So you're rotating. Um, so we're trying to get to 90 degrees there and there. That's called external and internal rotation. You can try this side the same way. And if that all feels good, I'm going to stand up for a sec so you can just see a couple other things. So I'm just going to do a, a forward bend, which I'm sure you all know. So just straight legs, dropping over like that. Or you can do this, hands together, and rotate this way. So I'm turning everything except for my feet when I do that. My hands are together and I'm rotating. Um, and then you also can do stuff like this with your shoulder. You bring your arm up like that um, with your palm out, or you can go this way. 
which is called shoulder flexion. So I want you to pick something like that that you can retest after what we're doing. And I'd also like you to do a little vocal test. So if you have a song that you can think of in your head, sing a little bit of something before we do this. So I'm just gonna demo with If I Loved You. So if we did, if I loved you time and again, I would try to say something about that length. So get a sense of where your voice is and your body are right now. And now we're gonna do an internal focus series for your spine. So um, this is going to be done seated or standing. It's up to you, whichever is better. But if you are seated, I want you to sit up so that you're on your sit bones, which are those little rockers down um, on the bottom there against the chair that you're sitting in. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna talk you through an internally focused spinal lengthening, and then we're gonna retest your body and your voice. So we're gonna start thinking about our pelvis. So go ahead and sit tall or stand up. And as you're standing or sitting, try to think about the bottom of your pelvis, your pelvic floor, and imagine that moving down towards the ground. So you're gonna move that down to the floor. And at the same time, you're now gonna find your tailbone with your mind, just think about your tailbone, and try to move that tailbone also down to the ground. And then you're gonna think up through your low back. It's called your lumbar vertebrae, you got five of them. So you're gonna think of moving those vertebrae apart in both directions. So the top of your low back is gonna move up, the bottom of it's gonna move down towards that tailbone. And keep breathing as you do this. And then we're gonna think up through our thoracic spine, which are the 12 vertebrae that have ribs on them. So we'll start in your mid to low back. So you're gonna think of moving those vertebrae apart. And then you're gonna move, think up to your mid back and try to think about moving those vertebrae apart in your middle back, move them apart. So you're moving your tailbone still down to the ground. And now we're gonna go up to our upper back. Going to think about those ribs moving up towards the sky as your tailbone moves down to the ground. And now you're going to think about your neck and think about that moving up, up, up. Those vertebrae, you got seven of them in your neck and your tailbone moves to the ground. And then finally, think of your skull floating up towards the ceiling and tailbone to the ground. And take one more breath like that and go ahead and relax and shake it out and recheck your range of motion after doing that. Stand up and do a forward bend, check something and then sing again. If I loved you time and again, I would try to say, and see how you feel after going through that sequence. So that was internal focus, paying attention to your self, your own body internally. And now we're gonna do the same drill, but with external focus. So how we're gonna do that is you're gonna grab something you've got. I'm gonna use my pillow here. It's gonna go on the top of my head like that. So I'm gonna hold it there, but I'm gonna think about pushing the pillow up towards the ceiling through my spine. So I'm going to try to push it up. So I'm thinking about the object, not myself, and I'm pushing the pillow up to the sky. And then at the same time, I'm taking the waistband of my pants and I'm pushing that down to the floor. So the pillow pushes up, the waistband pushes down. The pillow pushes up, the waistband pushes down. One more breath like that, push the object up, push the waistband down and relax and shake it out. Check your range of motion again. Mine is better after doing that, so I can go further into my rotation. I'm gonna sing again. If I loved you time and again, I would try to say, so that was better for me personally, that, that version, the external focus. And so what you are trying to think about is where should I, what kind of drills should I do for myself when I'm doing my voice practice? If you found that, for instance, the internal, the thinking inside, really made things better. I'm gonna give you some suggestions in this call for how you can train. If you were like me and the external one made you better, then I'm gonna tell you some stuff you can try for that. So an easy one to use is hearing. So we're gonna start with that. So we have two kinds of hearing. We have what's called air conduction and bone conduction. So air conduction is hearing sounds outside of yourself and bone conduction is listening within. So before we do anything else, let's test your air conduction. So take your finger like this and rub your fingers that way and put it in front of your ear 
and use the same hand in front of your other ear. Sorry, one second, I gotta put my mail. Oh, technology. Um, so we're rubbing like that and rubbing like this. Does that sound the same on both sides? Try to notice if that sounds like the same quality of sound on both sides. And so that's air conduction. We're gonna amplify it now while you sing. So take the same phrase you were doing. You're gonna start, you, you guys will cup your, um, I'm gonna have you cup your right ear first. I'll do my left. You can mirror me on the camera. So we're gonna make this shape, like you're making an amplification there. So here we go, we're gonna go. If I loved you time and again, I would try to say. So this is an externally focused drill because we're building sound and air conduction, which is external focus. Let's try the other side like that. So make a shell like that and sing again. If I loved you time and again, I would try to say. And now you can do both. So cup them up and give it a try. If I loved you time and again, I would try to say. So see how that feels for you to have your hearing really enlivened like that. And then the other option is to do bone conduction, which is more internal focused. And so how you're gonna do that is by humming. There's this little thing in the front of the ear there called the tragus. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug that. So you're going to close up your ear by pushing onto that there. So we're gonna hum, everyone's gonna hum this pitch with me. So I'm plugging and releasing. So when you plug and release, it should sound louder when you plug. It should wake up more sound in your head. So see if that's happening for you. And switch sides. See if there's one side where it's more dull to you or if it's equally loud. And so then to work on your bone conduction, you have to turn off your air conduction. This is how you do it. You cup your hand this way, and now we're going to block the air conduction on that side. So you have to be in your in, inside your voice a little more. So try that on the side, block off that ear. If I loved you time and again, I would try to say, and then do the same thing on this side. You're gonna go like that. If I loved you time and again, I would try to say. So for me, that was the better side. Maybe you had a different response out there. And let's try both. Now you're not gonna be able to hear your voice through air conduction really at all. You have to focus inside. So both hands, here we go. If I loved you time and again, I would try to say. So this is a quick little test of how much do you need to increase your listening, your air conduction, which is your external world, or do you need a more internal world, which is this one where you have to listen inside your head. Bone conduction is the real name for placement in voice, which people call placement, of sending the sound somewhere. It's your bones vibrating and creating some kind of sympathetic vibration. So if you're starting to get a theme for yourself, you're like, oh, my internal was better, I'm gonna tell you a couple other things that you can try for that. Um, so two other things that are good internal focus drills are the tongue. So the way the tongue lives in your brain's map, it's right next to the insula, which is where all this interoception stuff lives. So we're gonna do a couple of tongue drills, one rhythm drill, and then we're gonna do one movement drill, and then you're gonna retest your voice. So we're gonna do what's called a dry K, which is a sound like the word cat or whatever, but you're not gonna put any air through it. So it's gonna be a very, um, you're not gonna use breath. So it's not gonna be like where you blow air through it. It's gonna be really dry. And you're gonna not use air when you do it. Just make the motion. I'm gonna try it and you guys try it with me. Good, and stop and sing your phrase again. If I loved you time and again, I would try to say. So for me, that was good. That tested well for my body. Um, so that's called a dry K. We're just making the contact in the back and working out your tongue is gonna be good for your internal senses. Now we're gonna do a movement drill, which is a tongue circle. Here's how you do it.
So keep going. So if you notice when I do it, my jaw's not moving. Hold on, sorry. Is this a text message? Nope, okay. Um, and go both ways if you haven't. And then you're gonna retest your singing voice. If I loved you time and again, I would try to say. So one more internal focused thing. So we have um, this vagus nerve that I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna show you how far it goes. So it goes from my brain here all the way down to my pelvis. I'll lift up so you can see that all the way down there. So what we're gonna check real quick is um, the fascia. So fascia is like a web that holds your body together. So we're gonna put our hands right here on our chest. And what you're gonna do is press in about like a half inch or so. And then you're gonna drag the fascia up and down and side to side, and then on the diagonals. And just see if anywhere is resisting your movement, like you can't move it so well. So the vagus nerve goes into the fascia all through this front of your body. So we're gonna press in. So for me, it's a little stuck down and over to the left. So I'm gonna hold that down and in and um, down and left while I sing. If I loved you time and again, I would try to say, and that was definitely much better for me. So because we're on a short call today, I'm just gonna show you the other places that you should try. So if you did that one and that was cool, you went up, down, side to side, diagonals, and you found a stuck direction, you push into the stuck and you sing. If that didn't work for you, you pull away from the stuck stuff. So I could try pulling that way. I can feel that's not gonna be as good for me, but it might be for you. And so if you did that, then you do your pecs here and here, and then you do your upper abs and you do your lower abs. So you just check that process everywhere through there. And that's really good interoceptive work. Now let's talk about extraoception. So if you were with the pillow and you were pushing that up and that felt really good, we have to do some drills that are about how you perceive the world out here. And so some ways to do that, the easiest way is your eyes because eyes are about sensing the world out here. So grab up your pencil that you got earlier. So what we're gonna do is called a pencil push up. So you hold it out at arm's length like this. I'm gonna bring the pencil in towards my nose and I'm gonna to try to keep one pencil tip all the way in. So you're gonna watch my eyes cross when I do it. Take a look. I'll do it one more time. So this is a, a workout for your eyeballs and you can see mine going whoop and coming in when I do that, yeah? So give it a try. So pick up your pencil and do three of them. And if it splits into two, you can come back out but try to come all the way in, try to touch the pencil to your nose. So you're aiming for the bridge of your nose and we'll do one more. And then we're gonna sing again. If I loved you time and again, I would try to say, definitely good for me. So that did something nice for my body when I did that, that's called a pencil push up. If that wasn't so good for you, here's the other thing to try. So you're gonna hold the pencil out at arm's length and then you gotta find a window or find the farthest distance you can look in your room. So we're, we've all spent a month now and plus just staring at screens all day. And so some of our eyes are getting tired from having to be close all the time. So this is called a near far drill. So you shift your eyeballs from the pencil to a far point. I'm gonna demo it in here. I don't have a lot of space this direction, but I'll show you what I mean. Hopefully you can see me. So I'm gonna go from near to far, near to far, near, far, in, out, 10 times. So do 10 switches from your pencil to something on your far wall or ideally out a window. And once you've done 10, you can stop and sing again. If I loved you time and again, I would try to say. So let me quickly summarize what we're talking about today so you can take this and run with it. So we did the long spine drill. We thought inside moving everything apart. We thought outside moving an object. If inside was good for you, if thinking of your internal life, you wanna to do tongue exercises and you wanna do the one with your hand where you pull the fascia of your torso in different directions. If you were more like the pillow pushing up was really, really good for you, then what you wanna think about are doing things with your eyeballs. And so what you can do is shift your vision to different depths or different objects in your room as you sing. Play around with how far to look and maybe what direction to look. You might find some quadrants in your eyeballs 
where all of a sudden you feel like, oh, that's easier for that note to come out or it feels like it's easier to access my voice. Um, eyes hold on to a lot of stuff. They're in 32 different parts of your brain. So they can affect a lot of things in terms of your singing. So give those things a try. It was great to be with you today. And hopefully I will see you all again soon. Bye.